We will see quartz wall or wrist watch circuit and motor working. This is circuit diagram of quartz watch. This is gears or wheels for rotating minute arm. Second hand is second gear moves faster so big gear. This solenoid coil is stator of lab with stepper motor with field winding. And this wheel is rotor of permanent magnet. This is the space of self supplying DC to stepper motor. This is pin for set the time now. Open the clock. The principal components in a quartz watch are the power source of the cell. The quartz crystal resonator, the IC integration circuit, the stepping motor, the gear train. Working of clock energy passes from the cell to the IC chip which powers the quartz crystal. The quartz crystal then cleans up the dirty signal and transmits back to the IC. A signal that is resonating at a FR frequency of 32768 Hz. Within the IC. A divider circuit steps down the signal 15 times until it reaches a very steady one impulse per second. This current is then fed to the motor. The motor construction. The lab motor is made up of three components. One, coil. Two, stator. Three, rotor, coil. The coil is made of a single copper, silver and or gold wire 0.01 to 0.025 mm in diameter wraps around the soft iron core, Fini. The coil has two purposes. One, to produce a magnetic field to drive the rotor when the motor control supplies the current. Two, to create a voltage induced by the changing magnetic field caused by the rotation of the rotor. Stator the stator is constructed of a soft iron core, Fini. The stator has two purposes. One, to complete the magnetic circuit generated by the coil. The majority of the magnetic field generated by the coil is directed through the stator, positioning it to work against the rotor in a specific manner. Two, to bring the rotor into a specific alignment after each rotation. Stator. Air gas. The rotor is constructed of a strong permanent magnet glued to a steel pin. I will include it. The rotor has two purposes. One, to convert the magnetic force generated in the coil into a rotational torque and apply to the gear train by its pin. Two, to hold the gear train in place between operations of the motor. Pin. Pin. Fittings. Arbor. Arbor. Magnet. How the lab motor works. In a quartz watch, the hands and gear train stay still the vast majority of the time. Therefore we can see that the motor is in operation for only the short portion of time each second. Within a short period of time, all the operations of the lab motor occur. Let's take a step by step look at the lab motor's operation, starting at rest. Step 1. Rest. At rest, the rotor is aligned with the stator according to the stator's maximum magnetic attraction. A motor's greatest point of attraction is called the cogging point. The shape of the stator, including the air gaps, are responsible for determining the position of the rotor. Step 2, Impulse. When it is time for the motor to operate, the motor control sends a brief electrical pulse to the coil. The current flows through the coil, creating a magnetic field. The field flows through the stator and reacts with the field of the rotor. This causes the rotor to rotate, the direction of which is determined by the geometry of the stator. The impulse from the coil is only as big as necessary to drive the rotor past the air gap. S N S N plus dash. 
Step 3. Aligning with the causing point. Once impulse is over, the magnetic field from the coil collapses. The magnetic field from the rotor is now dominant and attempts to align itself with the point of greatest attraction. This force of attraction and the inertia of the rotor keep rotating towards the next causing point. The force of attraction increases the closer it aligns with the causing point, causing the rotor to accelerate. Step 4. Coming to rest at the causing point. When the rotor reaches the causing point, it is rotating with enough momentum to overshoot it. As the rotor overshoots, the attraction slows down the rotor and reverses its direction back to the cogging point. This repeats for several decaying oscillations until the rotor comes to rest. Step 5, Rest. At this point, the rotor has rotated 180 dot in order to operate the motor. It will need another impulse. Earlier we set out current left to right without plus voltage on the left end, on the right. In order to reverse the direction of our magnetic field we will have to reverse the direction of our current flow by reversing the polarity of our voltage. Step 6, Impulse. For the next impulse, the motor control sends a brief electrical pulse to the coil. This time, the voltage and current direction is reversed, right to left. The exact same order of operations happens again. Note, all polarities are the opposite of what they were the last time. Yet the direction of rotation is the same, counterclockwise. N S dash A plus Step 7, aligning with the causing point. Again, the magnetic field from the coil collapses. The magnetic field from the rotor is now dominant and attempts to align itself with the point of greatest attraction. This force of attraction and the inertia of the rotor keep it rotating towards the next causing point. The force of attraction increases the closer it aligns with the causing point, causing the rotor to accelerate. Step 8, coming to rest at the causing point. When the rotor reaches the causing point, it is rotating with enough momentum to overshoot it. As the rotor overshoots, the attraction slows down the rotor and reverses its direction back to the causing point. This repeats for several decaying oscillations until the rotor comes to rest. Completed. The rotor has now completed one revolution and the set of 8 steps are ready to repeat. Let's take a look at how the complete revolution happens in rapid succession. Complete rotor rotation. Step 1, rest. Step 5, rest. Step 2, impulse. Step 6, impulse. Step 3, aligning with the causing point. Step 7, aligning with the causing point. Step 4, coming to rest at the causing point. Step 8, coming to rest at the causing point. N S S N plus dash A plus.